Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab and what I got in this video is an awesome tutorial for those looking to gain more power and more photography, you know, more creative photography using a camera like the Sony a7R 4 and that is the camera I'm going to use to for this tutorial slash demonstration, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to go over in particular is aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, and manual mode. I'm also going to cover bulb mode quickly, but basically those three modes are tools to help you get more creative photography. Aperture allows you to control the aperture of the lens. Shutter speed allows you to control the amount of time that the exposure is taking place, like how long the shutter is actually open. That's measured in time and that's known as shutter speed. Manual mode basically allows you to control aperture, shutter speed, and ISO all independently. So I'm going to cover that in this video, and if you're looking to learn that stuff, this will be a great video for you. It doesn't matter what kind of camera you have, but obviously if you have a Sony a7R 4 it'll be very easy to follow along. But all cameras in this regard pretty much work the same. It might just be a different dial or whatever. So the concepts is really a photography tutorial more than a camera tutorial per se. The concepts, like I said, will they transcend like all photography and stuff like that. So what I'm going to cover first is the exposure triangle. And the exposure triangle, as you can see here, is basically just a triangle and it has aperture on one side, shutter speed on the other, and ISO on the bottom. And what this exposure triangle is, it's just an illustrative tool to try to get you to understand basically the concepts of exposure. And it's, it's not rocket science, but again, if you're new to it, it's very overwhelming and very confusing um, for sure. So illustrations like this are very helpful. So I created this illustration in Photoshop and I've seen illustrations similar to this before in the past, but I decided to create my own and it's a little easier to understand in my opinion visually. I'm a visual learner and a lot of you guys seem to be as well that subscribe to my channel. So hopefully this helps you out. So as you can see on the left side of the exposure triangle is aperture. And like I was saying earlier, aperture controls the diaphragm inside the lens. And what the lens diaphragm is, is basically how big the eye of the lens is. The, the aperture will basically get small. If you want it to, you can control that. So, and why would you want to do that? Well, basically the aperture controls how much light gets into the sensor. So it's it very easy to picture if you're trying to pour like a glass of water inside a bucket, for example, if the bucket top is wide open, you could just pour that water into the bucket and it'll flow in like really fast. And that's why you might've heard the term fast lenses. Fast lenses have large apertures and that allows you to gather the light very quickly. So now if you stop the lens down and you close the aperture, the eye of that diaphragm, the eye of the lens basically closes down. And when you close that down, just like if you're picturing a top of a bucket, if you start closing the top of the bucket down and you have a small hole and you try to pour water in that, the water is going to take much longer to get into the bucket because there's a smaller hole to let that water in. Just like if you're taking a photograph, the smaller hole, it's going to take longer for the light to get into the sensor. And that's basically what exposure is. It's, it's just getting that light to the sensor so you can capture a moment in time. And a proper exposure is basically just having the right lighting and things like that. But it is subjective because depending on what you're trying to do, you could take a picture of the same exact scene with many different camera settings and get radically different results. For example, you might want to capture some motion blur. You might want to have a really shallow depth of field where only your subject in the front is sharp and everything in the background is blurry, for example. And you might want to freeze the action in sports photography, so you might need a really fast shutter speed and stuff like that. So moving on to shutter speed, shutter speed, you have to think about it as time. All right, so think of shutter speed as a clock you know, just like a clock going around. So when your shutter opens, that exposes the sensor to the light that's coming in. So the longer that shutter is open, the more light that's gonna get to your sensor and also more time. So with the longer that shutter is open, the more time there is, the more motion blur you're gonna get. So if the shutter's open for one full second, for an example, and something walks past, that's going to be all blurry because the shutter was open that whole time. Now, 
to reverse that, if you have somebody running towards you, like it's sport, sports or something like that, and you want to freeze the action, you want a really fast shutter. You want like one five hundredth of a second, for example. And then the shutter basically is just like, whoosh, it opens and closes extremely fast. So it's only exposing that sensor for one five hundredth of a second. So whatever light comes in there, it's going to be like frozen. You know, it's, the subject's going to be frozen, and I'm going to demonstrate that in the lab. I have a nice little lab scene set up here, and I'm going to demonstrate these concepts. But I just wanted to try to illustrate and talk over these concepts while you're looking at the exposure triangle. So you can try to wrap your mind around it. And then when I actually show you in the lab, hopefully those pieces will fall in place, and you'll be like, ah, oh, I get it now. So that's why I'm, I'm explaining this exposure triangle in such detail. Again, shutter speed is time. Aperture is basically the size of the lens diaphragm and, and what it's set to. Now on the bottom of the exposure triangle, you have ISO. Now ISO is the sensor sensitivity. And basically what that means, back in the day there was film and it had different ISO ratings. That basically is how quickly the sensor itself can capture light. So you can make that sensor more sensitive by raising up the ISO. So when you raise the ISO, the sensor becomes more sensitive because you're like basically pumping voltage into it. So the downside of that is it's going to introduce noise. So the higher the ISO, the more noise that's going to be present in your image. So it might, it'll get more grainy. You'll lose detail the higher the ISO is. Um, so you, in general, want to have your ISO as low as possible and that's just basically what it does, but it's a tool to help you get a good exposure. That is basically the exposure triangle. Now again, those tools, the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, are basically the tools you have to manipulate your exposure on a camera, and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. So let's move on into the lab scene, and I will try to illustrate these concepts to really help nail down in your mind how this works and how it actually translates in the real world. So let's do that and I'll catch up with you in a second. I'll be behind the camera and we will go over these concepts again, like I said, as I'm adjusting the settings so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And I also need to cover depth of field, but it's easier to illustrate that in the lab. That's also another characteristic of aperture. All right guys, so here we are in my little lab scene and I got the Sony a7R 4 set to aperture priority mode, which is the A. And you can see that A up there on the top left of the screen. Now, this dial here on the top, you can control the aperture with. And notice the aperture right here is changing. And aperture is measured in what's called f-stops, which is also the size of the aperture diaphragm. As you can see on this Sigma 105 millimeter f1.4 lens, as I dial the aperture, you can actually see the lens diaphragm changing. On the Sony a7R 4 right now, I have the 24 to 105 f4 G OSS lens for this demonstration. So I also have the ISO set to auto right now. So when I change the aperture, notice how the shutter speed is not changing. And that's because the ISO is automatically changing. So let me show you what I mean. If I press the shutter button down halfway, I'm at ISO 160. That's the current ISO required, the sensor sensitivity, for F4 and 1 50th of a second. So when I scroll up to like F8 and then I focus, notice now the ISO is at ISO 640. So the ISO went up in order to allow more light gathering. So the sensor sensitivity, so now my image is going to be a little bit more noisy because the ISO is higher at F8 and 1 50th of a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my ISO by hitting this button over here and I'm going to set it to a hard number like ISO 100 because I want to re really want to show you how, is, how aperture and shutter speed relate to one another as far as getting a proper exposure. So right now you can see at f8 the shutter speed is at 1 8th of a second. So watch what happens when I change the aperture now. Notice how my shutter speed is getting slower and faster. So right now I'm going down so it's speeding up. So at f4 I can get 1 30th of a second at ISO 100. So 1 30th of a second is the fastest shutter speed I can get with this lens right now in the current lighting environment because f4 is the fastest aperture that this lens offers. If I had a faster lens like an f2.8 lens or something like that, the shutter speed would go faster in this current lighting environment. 
So the only thing I can do to get a faster shutter speed in this environment is to raise up the ISO. Now another thing that aperture controls is depth of field. So watch what happens when I focus on the front of this tape measure. You see that? So I'm focused on the front of the tape measure and now the background completely blurred out. And that is what's called depth of field. And that's just the nature of the aperture size and the sensor size. So this is a full frame camera, so the depth of field control is awesome. With smaller sensor cameras like the A6400, which has an APS-C sensor, the depth of field control is not as good. Um, it's not as like pronounced as it is on a larger sensor like this full frame sensor. So now if I focus on one of these cans in the back, you can see now the tape measure is completely out of focus in the front and the depth of field now shifted. And again, the depth of field is basically the sliver, the sliver of sharpness. So the sliver of sharpness at f4 is going to be pretty pretty low. If I focus right here, like the sharpness is only going to be like a few inches at f4. Now watch what happens when I stop it down. So when I raise it up to like f8, f9, f11, f16, you can see how the details in the back are starting to come in. Notice how you can now see the details on the cans, you can see more detail on the face and stuff like that. But because the sensor is so large and the subject that I'm focusing on is so close to the camera, the, the background is still a little bit blurry. And that is the depth of field. And the depth of field fall off is basically how the sharpness carries out throughout the scene. So right now I probably have like a good foot of sharpness, like about a couple inches in front of this and a couple inches behind it would be sharp and that is just the depth of field. All right, so that's how you control that. And that's basically what Aperture Priority does. It gives you control over the aperture and the camera will take care of the rest for you. So, like I said, if you turn this, you can see how the shutter speed is changing. So it has to allow more time in order to get the proper exposure. Remember, when the whole of the aperture is open, that's how much light can come in. So at F11, F13, F14, F16, it's going to take 0.6 seconds in order to get a proper exposure because the hole, the aperture diaphragm, is so small. And then if I open it all the way up to F4, now the aperture is wide open and it's going to be able to gather that light in a much shorter amount of time because it's wide open. So it's going to take 1 25th of a second in this lighting environment in order to get a proper exposure. Let me switch it over to shutter priority mode. And now you can see the screen just went black. And that's because the shutter speed is at 1 500th of a second. Now there's not near enough light in this environment to get a, a proper exposure, and that's why everything is blinking. You see the F4 is blinking because it's saying you need a faster aperture than this in order to get a proper exposure. So now this dial here is going to act as the shutter speed dial. So if I turn the dial down, look, so I'm slowing the shutter speed down, which is allowing more time for the camera to get a proper exposure. So I'm going to have to go all the way down to 1 20th of a second. So at 1 20th of a second, I can get a proper exposure in this current lighting environment. So shutter speed, again, controls time. And notice how the aperture is automatically changing. So if I want to get a slower shutter speed, notice how the camera is automatically changing the aperture for me because I'm in shutter priority mode. So you can see it's in orange right now because that's what I'm controlling. Now in shutter priority mode, a lot of times I will use auto ISO because I pretty much want the camera locked at a specific shutter speed. So for example, if I want 1 500th of a second, let me change my ISO to auto and watch what happens. See that? Now I have a proper exposure because the ISO automatically adjusted. So if I press my shutter down halfway, it'll tell you what the ISO currently is. ISO 2500. So ISO 2500 is required in this lighting environment to get 1 500th of a second shutter speed, which will freeze the action. So again, a faster lens, this would be a lower number. See, it's at ISO 2000 now because I'm at F4. So let me show you what you can do with a slower shutter speed. When I slow the shutter down to like one eighth of a second, let's say, I have this little prop here that I use to demonstrate this concept. So if I spin this thing like so, and I take the picture, let's take a look and see what it looks like. You see how it's all blurry? That's because 
That's because this thing spun around several times within the amount of time that the exposure was taken. So one eighth of a second. So the shutter was open for one eighth of a second. Now within that time frame, within that time, this thing spun around like multiple times, you know? So that's why it captured that in a blurry way. Now if I wanted to freeze this, I would need to raise that shutter speed to lower the amount of time. So let me raise the shutter speed. I'll raise it to like one four hundredth of a second. And then I will do the same test here, like so. And you can see how it froze the action. Now you just see the one blade. Now the, it didn't focus on it, unfortunately, because I didn't have it close enough, but it did freeze the action. Let's try this again. Yeah, it focused on the face in the background, but you can see it still froze the action. It didn't blur it out like it did in the previous picture. So watch what happens when I slow the shutter down a little more here. Let me see. I'll go to like something like that. All right, so now watch this. And now you can see it's like super extra blurry because it spun around like probably 10 times in that half, ex half a second exposure. So again, shutter speed controls time. And this is how you would get blurry water, blurry taillights when a car is driving away at night, anything like that. Fireworks that are really streaky, you know, those long fireworks. That motion blur effect is done by slowing your shutter speed down. And that allows the sensor to capture information for a longer period of time. And if there's anything moving in front of the camera, that's gonna result in a motion blur effect. And you can get really, really creative shots using shutter speed and manipulating it in this fashion. And I really hope this very simple demonstration illustrated that for you. So now, if I go into manual mode, switch to the M there, now I have control of everything independently. And notice here in the center, you have what's called a meter. That meter will basically tell you if the camera is at a proper exposure. And right now it's not working because I have it on auto ISO, so it's just blinking. So let me change the ISO to a fixed value, like 100, for example. All right, so now I have it at ISO 100, F4, and I have it at half of a second. So half a second of time is gonna drastically overexpose the image. Way too much light is coming in for this current setup. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make my shutter speed faster. So if I turn this dial and I increase the shutter speed, watch how the metering mode comes down. So it's going to tell me when it's at a proper exposure when it hits zero right there. So that's a proper exposure. And again, look, we're at F4, 1 25th of a second, ISO 100. So that is a proper exposure and I'm using manual mode to do that. Now, this dial in the front here on the grip will control the aperture in this mode. And then the dial on the top will control the shutter speed by default. So you can manipulate the exposure by changing either of these. Watch. If I change the shutter speed, look at my meter. See how the meter is changing? And then if I change the aperture, notice how the meter is also changing. So I'm manipulating the exposure using these two tools. Now again, you can also use ISO, that's your other tool. So I can also manipulate the exposure by changing the ISO. So if I go to ISO 200, now I'm at plus one. See that? And if I change the ISO to 400, it should be at plus two. Yeah, plus two, see that? So now that I'm at ISO 400, I'm at plus two, I need to change either the aperture or the shutter speed in order to get a proper exposure. So let me show you that concept. Watch this. If I change the aperture and I close that diaphragm, the iris of the lens a little bit, less light's gonna come in and I'm gonna get a proper exposure. So at F8, ISO 400, 1 25th of a second, I'm getting a proper exposure in this current lighting environment. So let me put that back to F4 and let me show you now when I change the shutter speed. So if I make the shutter speed faster so the shutter is open for less time, I'm gonna get a proper exposure. So one one hundredth of a second, I'm getting a proper exposure at F4 ISO 400. You see what I'm saying? That's how that works.
and it's really, really powerful. It's, it's really not that complicated, but you know, the concept is a little bit complicated because you have depth of field, you have shutter speed, which is time, and then aperture, which also controls the amount of light coming into the lens, and then you have sensor sensitivity. So I really hope those concepts made sense to you and you kind of got something out of this because that's basically how it works. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you was bulb mode. For bulb mode, you really want to use a shutter release cable because you don't want to touch the camera. And what bulb mode allows you to do, watch what happens if I make my shutter speed really long, watch. If I keep going one second, two seconds, three seconds, all the way to 30. Now, if I go one more, it goes into bulb mode. You see that? So if you go beyond 30 seconds in manual mode, that will switch your camera to bulb mode. So now, let me just make my ISO back to 100 for the cleanest image possible. So what bulb mode does, you have to actually hold the shutter button down like so. So I'm just holding it down and it's currently exposing. And when you let go, it stops exposing. Now what's cool about bulb mode is this is what you would use ultimately for fireworks or extremely long exposures. If you want like a two minute exposure, for example, you would need to use bulb mode because the slowest shutter speed is 30 seconds on this camera. So if you wanna go beyond 30 seconds, you're gonna to need to use bulb mode. And again, if you have a shutter release cable, there's a button on it so you won't be touching the camera and you could basically just lock the shutter release to open and then use like some kind of timer, a stopwatch to time your exposure to whatever it might be. If you've ever seen those water shots where the water actually looks like smoke um, because the exposure was so long, it'll actually make water look smooth even if it's like choppy and wavy. And that's because the exposure was so long. It was like a minute or two. And another tool you can use to get a longer exposure in brighter conditions is a ND filter. And an ND filter is basically tinted glass. It's tinted glass that you put on front of the lens and that will help you get a slower shutter speed in given conditions. You know, in bright conditions, you can often not get that slow of a shutter. If it's really bright and sunny out, there's really not much you can do. You can set the camera to F22 and you're still only gonna get, you know, a, a 125th, 130th of a second or something like that if it's really bright out. So what you would wanna do is use an ND filter on the front of the lens. I actually have a variable ND filter, which is awesome. And you can just dial it in to how much tint you want. And that works really well for getting slower shutter speeds. And that also is great for video because when you're recording video, if you're recording at 24p, for example, you're gonna to want to have the camera set to 1 50th of a second. So like this, 1 50th of a second, F4, ISO 100. And notice it is blinking because the shutter speed is too slow and it's not gonna be a proper exposure. So what I would do is I would just put the ISO on auto, like so, and that'll give you a proper exposure when recording video. So now you can see ISO 200 is what's required to get 1 50th of a second at F4. But again, if you're in really bright conditions, this isn't gonna work for you. You're gonna to have to put some kind of tinted glass in front of the lens in order to get that 1 50th of a second if you're recording at 24p. And the concepts of the shutter speed and aperture and stuff like that, that works in video as well. So I can slow that shutter down while recording video and it will also give me that motion blur effect but it will look kind of weird because it's video, but you can get a cool motion blur effect with video. And same thing with the action, you know, the faster the shutter speed, the sharper the action is gonna be, but it also isn't gonna look very good in video because it'll actually look choppy, which is why you tend to want to double the, whatever the frame rate is, you wanna double when recording video. If I was recording at 60p, I would ultimately want to have the shutter at like 1 20th of a second or whatever's closest to that because you always want to double whatever the frame rate is when recording video. Now let me just show you while recording video quick how the depth of field works. So I'm at f4 right now. All right so now I'm recording at f4 ISO 250 1 50th of a second and the depth of field is extremely shallow. So watch what happens when I use touch to focus if I just touch like right there the camera will automatically switch focus. And now you can see, because the depth of field is so narrow, the tape measure is now out of focus and blurry.
and then I could focus over here on the face or whatever I want or and then I could go back to the front of the tape measure and it'll switch back and you can see that depth of field is extremely narrow but while recording video I can actually change the aperture which isn't really the best practice when you're recording video and, and depending on what you're doing but I can increase the depth of field so I could make more of the scene sharp you know what I mean because I'm increasing the depth of field and notice how the ISO is raising up because I have it set to auto ISO so now it's at ISO 2500 but now if I switch focus you can see more, much more of the scene is in focus now. You can see the tape measure in the background. You can see the face on that little figurine there. And the, you know, the cans here are also fairly readable and sharp. So the depth of field is much larger at F14, just like it would be in photography mode, because the concepts are the same. Aperture shutter speed and, you know, uh, manual mode are, are pretty much the same in video depending on what you're doing. But like I said, ideally in video, you do want the shutter speed at a fixed value. So that's why a lot of times I will use shutter priority in video mode just to make sure that my shutter stays where I want it. In this case, I have it set to aperture priority mode, but you can change that by hitting, if you hit the function button, you can go in here. Well, I gotta stop recording video first. So if I hit the function button, you can go in here and you can change what mode you are recording video in. So I can change it to shutter priority mode or I can change it to manual mode for the most power possible. So shutter priority mode is great if you want to lock that shutter at a certain speed. Manual mode is great if you just want full power, your scene is not changing, and you can actually just adjust everything like that. So I'll put this at 1 50th of a second and then I can change my aperture to whatever I want and notice the ISO is automatically changing, which in this case is what I want because I don't want the shutter speed changing and I want the exposure to maintain. I wanna maintain the exposure, the proper exposure, even if the lighting slightly changes. So that's why I have it on ISO auto and that will automatically adjust for you. So that is the advantage of using auto ISO. But again, sometimes that isn't what you want and you're gonna to wanna to set that to a fixed value. So that is pretty much it for how to use aperture mode, shutter mode, and manual mode on the Sony a7R IV. I really hope you got something out of this video. And again, it, it's not rocket science, but these concepts are very confusing if you're new to photography and stuff like that. So I really hoped this helped explain those concepts to you. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to ask below the video and I will be happy to help you out. All right, I will catch up with you guys next time. Please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and also hit that thumbs up if this video helped you out. And be sure to hit that notification bell if you wanna see new videos as they are released. You will get like an email reminder about the videos. In addition, I have links below the video in the description area with accessories, recommended gear, and all sorts of stuff like that. If you are in the market for some stuff, like you need memory cards and things like that, I have um, all, the re all my recommendations and the gear I use below the video in the description area if you're looking to get some stuff. And of course, if you have questions like, Jay, I don't know what, I don't know what lens to get, I don't know what memory card to get, or whatever the case may be, just ask below the video and I will be happy to help. All right, guys, I'll catch up with you next time. Have a great day.